Dear students, this is a second lecture related to electrodynamics. In the first lecture, we have considered the basics of electrostatics. And in this video, we will consider the fundamentals of magnetostatics. Okay, let us start with the magnetostatics. Now, before considering the fundamentals of magnetostatics, let us summarize what we have studied in the case of electrostatics. Any electrostatic problem may be represented as a cause effect principle with the static charge rho as the cause and the electrostatic field E as the effect. And there are two methods to find the effect due to the cause. One is Coulomb's law and the other one is Gauss flux theorem. We have integral equations and differential equations to represent Gauss flux theorem. The conservative nature of electrostatic field that is line integral e dot dl equals 0 is represented by the curl equation del cross e is equal to 0. Then we have considered two cases, two helping cases for the electrostatic that is the potential formulation and the second one is boundary conditions. In potential formulation we observe there is a relation between electrostatic field and the scalar potential v that is e is equal to minus del v and in case of dielectric inhomogeneities that is boundaries we have the boundary conditions for the tangential component as e t1 is equal to e t2 and for the normal component dn1 minus dn2 is equal to rho the static field equations are represented as del dot t equals rho by epsilon 0 and del cross e is equal to 0 these are the static field equations for electrostatics and uh, the relations connecting electric field and potential as E is equal to minus del V and the boundary conditions ET1 is equal to ET2 and DN1 minus DN2 is equal to rho. Now coming to magnetostatics, the source is a steady current. Now similar to that of uh, electrostatics, say in electrostatics the source is a steady charge or a static charge and the effect is a static field. In magnetostatics, the source is a steady current and the effect is a static magnetic field. And the magnetic field around the steady current can be evaluated or can be observed or identified by making use of another current element placed in the magnetic field. In the case of electrostatics, we place a test charge to identify the force of interaction whereas in this case we will place a current element another current element in order to find the uh, effect due to the primary current or the source current and the force acting on the test current element is taken and from that we will identify uh, the effect acting like that now in this case uh, there are different types of current sources the first current source is taken as the line current and the line current is taken as uh, by the letter I. Whereas for the collection of current elements there is I1, I2, I3 etc. I1, I2, I3, I4. So different current sources are there. So it is equal to summation I, I, I. That is the total current I. I is equal to sigma I, I. Then uh, similar to that of uh, static charge situations here we have two more current sources one is uh, surface current distribution a surface current distribution means a current flowing through a plane surface or some curved surface and here this is represented using a letter k that is called the current density so here current is flowing along the along the surface and if we consider any cross-sectional area any cross-sectional area the current crossing per unit time is taken as the current flowing through the surface and if you take unit length of that surface unit length of that surface and the current crossing is taken as the current density k ampere per meter and the other type of current distribution is the volume current density and in this case it is represented by the current density vector j we consider any take or take any element ds and the current flow passing through this one is uh, say jds jds if ds is taken as one unit 
then that is the current density j current crossing per unit section so that the expression i is equal to surface integral j dot ts the case of surface current can be represented as line integral k dot dl is equal to the total current i so the effect in this case is the static magnetic field and the source is a static current and the static magnetic field uh, may be represented using the letter V, the magnetic flux density V. And for a point current, or uh, sorry, a, a steady current represented by the letter J in this figure, uh, we can identify a region around the current. Uh, there is a magnetostatic effect is experiencing, and that is called the magnetic field region. And it is measured, as I have mentioned, by placing another current element there and uh, by considering the force experiencing. So, similar to that of electrostatics, the magnetostatic problem may be considered as the cause effect principle with the source as J and the effect as B. For the case of a material medium, the magnetic field is taken as the magnetic intensity vector H. So, in the case of electrostatics, we observe two methods for evaluating the electric field. That is, one is Coulomb's law and the other is Gauss flux theorem. Here also we have two methods. The first method is Biot Savert law. The Biot Savert law gives the force of interaction between two current carrying conductors. Current I1 and I2 are flowing through uh, different conductors, then the interaction force is given by Biot Savert law. And from that, we are able to find out an expression for the intensity of magnetic field at a distance location. That is, uh, B is given by mu zero by four pi into ideal cross R divided by R square, with the magnetic constant mu zero is equal to four pi into ten raised to minus seven Henry per meter, uh, similar to that of the electrical constant epsilon zero for free space. Here it is uh, permeability mu zero. Now, the second method is by making use of Ampere's circuital theorem. Now, Ampere's circuital theorem is related to a line integral. So, here a current I is considered and around that current, we are constructing a closed path, a closed path around uh, the current element and we are taking the line integral of the magnetic field over the closed path and we get line integral B dot TL. The line integral B dot TL for the single current in enclosed within the closed path. If you construct a surface with this closed path, enclosing the closed path, you can see that there is only one current element passing through this one current element. So the current enclosed in this case is I mu zero times I. Now in short, suppose there are, there are different current elements and we are constructing a closed path around that and we are taking B dot DL then the closed line integral will be line integral b dot dl is equal to mu zero times the surface integral j dot ds that is in this case it is uh, mu zero into summation i i i that is i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus etc so this is ampere circuital theorem so this integral form of ampere circuital theorem can be represented in terms of point form as well so this is the point form that is del cross B is equal to mu zero J. In the case of electrostatics, we observe that del cross B is equal to, sorry, del cross E is equal to zero. That is curl of E is equal to zero. But in this case, the curl of B is not equal to zero. That is del cross B is equal to mu zero times I, the current enclosed. Now, the other equation that is Gauss flux theorem is applicable for magnetism also. In this case, we consider the Gauss flux theorem in magnetostatics, that is total normal magnetic flux over a closed surface is equal to zero in this case. That is, if you consider any closed path, any closed surface around a magnet like North Pole and South Pole, we can see that the magnetic field line start from North Pole and then the, uh, say South Pole like this. So, the total number 
emerging out through the surface is equal to that entering and it uh, since the magnetic field lines produces closed loops uh, it travel from south pole to north pole through the material medium so that the total normal magnetic flux over the closed surface in this case becomes zero that is if two lines are coming out then two lines are entering like that so instead suppose we consider another uh, volume like this so again this is applicable one line is crossing at this junction and another is crossing here but both are entering through this region this region okay in all cases so this uh, shows one important property of uh, the magnetic source that is always magnetic uh, poles that is north pole and south pole exist in pairs and associated with the north pole there will be a south pole so uh, the differential form of this is given by del dot p is equal to zero in the case of electrostatics del dot e is equal to rho by epsilon zero that is the possibility of source within but here there is no source inside so del dot p is equal to zero so uh, we get two curl equations similar to that of the uh, electrostatics now in the case of a material medium just like that for the electrostatic uh, polarization in the case of material medium we have polarization represented by the vector p here we have a vector represented by m that is called the magnetization vector m and the intensity inside the material medium is taken as the uh, magnetic field intensity vector h and the relations uh, in this case is b is equal to mu h where mu is called the permeability of the medium and in terms of the magnetization this expression changes to p by mu zero minus m is equal to the intensity uh, vector h now the two helping tools similar to that of uh, electrostatics is applicable here also one is the uh, potential formulation and the other is the boundary value problems uh, related to complicated sources and with respect to medium changes and the potential formulation is in terms of the magnetic potential a and the boundary conditions in terms of the tangential and normal component of magnetic field components now we can see that uh, the, the already observed uh, the equations connecting the divergence of magnetic field as del dot b is equal to zero we can see that any uh, vector with a divergence zero then this vector can be represented as a curl of another vector function that is del cross a vector function in this case we take it as a uh, vector potential a that is b is equal to del cross a so the basic the simple method to uh, consider this uh, is in terms of the equation divergence equation if the divergence of an equation is equal to zero then that vector can be considered as the curl of another vector so a is the magnetic vector potential and coming to boundary condition uh, similar to that of electrostatics here also we have two boundary condition one is for the tangential component and the other is for the normal component we again divide the magnetic field intensity coming randomly to two directions one parallel to the surface boundary and the other perpendicular so let this be uh, the magnetic field b it is taken as b t1 and the other one is b n1 now at the boundary the normal component simply passes through the boundary and we will consider it as the continuous nature that is bn1 is equal to bn2 that is the normal magnetic flux is continuous across the boundary whereas the tangential component is discontinuous that means there is some change happening for the tangential component that is ht1 minus ht2 is equal to k cross n k is the surface current density and n is a vector perpendicular to the current direction and the plane of the surface so the magnetostatics may be summarized like this it is a cause effect principle similar to that of electrostatics with j as the steady current as the source 
and B or H as the static magnetic field as the effect. And the two equations that we are using usually to find the effect due to the course that is a magnetic field is evaluated using Biot Savart law and Ampere Circuital Theorem. And the equation for the Ampere Circuital Theorem in differential form is del cross B is equal to mu zero J. And the Gauss flux theorem in this case surface interval B dot ds changes to del dot P equals zero in point form. And the potential in this case is B is given by del cross A and the boundary conditions are given by BN1 is equal to BN2 that is normal component is continuous and the tangential component is discontinuous by uh, a K cross M. So we have discussed the fundamentals of magnetostatic similar to that for the electrostatics in both cases we observed that it is possible to represent with the two static field equations. We are mainly interested with the two static field equations in electrostatics and two static field equations in magnetostatics. And we will consider these four static field equations uh, as the basics of electrostatics. And we will consider or we will modify these four static field equations uh, to get the basics of electrodynamics. That is when time also is coming into picture, there is some modification you have to uh, uh, make uh, on these four equations. Okay, that is all about. Thank you.